Parsha Shlach opens up with the story of the Meraglim bringing back the bad report, telling the Bnei Yisrael that the land of Israel cannot be conquered, will all die in battle. Rashi notes that this story of the Meraglim is right after the story of Miriam. <clears throat> right in the end of the last Parsha, we're told that Miriam spoke Lashon Hara about her brother Moshe, and because of that, she was sent Chutz <coughs> Rashi makes the point that this Parsha of the Meraglim is Somoch, is close to the story of Miriam. Rashi is bothered by the fact that it chronologically it didn't happen that way. It didn't happen that the story of Miriam occurred and then the Meraglim was sent out. There was quite a time span between it. Rashi is bothered by why does the Torah put these two events together? Rashi brings down the Medrash that tells us the reason. The reason is because these Meraglim saw what happened to Miriam. They lived through that experience and Miriam was punished for speaking Lashon Hara. They didn't learn Musr, they didn't learn from it. Therefore, the Torah puts us these events together to teach us their wickedness. They lived through it, didn't learn the lesson, and that made their sin much more egregious. This Rashi is quite difficult to understand because the sin of the Meraglim was not a sin of Lashon Hara. Their sin was a lack of Bitochan. In their mind's eye, they saw that we couldn't conquer the land of Israel, we would have been killed. Their lack was a lack of trust in Hashem, a lack of Imuna, but it had nothing to do with Lashon Hara. Why does Rashi tell us that they didn't learn from what happened to Miriam when their sin had nothing to do with Lashon Hara, had to do with lack of Betochen? And I believe the answer to this question is based on understanding why the Torah is so machmir, so strict about Lashon Hara. The Rambam defines Lashon Hara as words that damage, whether they hurt a man's reputation, whether they hurt a man's business dealing, whether they hurt the way people look at that individual. The definition of Lashon Hara are words that hurt, words that damage. What the Torah is telling us is that words have very, very serious consequences. One of the greatest manifestations of that was the event of Miriam. She spoke about her brother who she loved dearly. She went to the Kohen Gadol as a her brother, Aaron, to just try to understand better, maybe help Moshe out with the mistake. But her intentions were pure, yet she was punished so severely that she was sent outside of the encampment for seven days. What the Meraglim should have seen was the impact, the power of words. If the Torah punished this tzaddikis with such a severe punishment, it's not because the Torah is very strict, it's because words are very powerful, words are very damaging. What the Meraglim should have seen is the power of speech. They should have seen the seriousness with which the Torah takes words, because words aren't just prattle, they aren't just things that are emitted from the human mouth, they're very potent very powerful. Had the Meraglim looked at what happened to Miriam, they would have taken Musa, they would have said, oh my goodness, look at the impact, look at the power of words. That would have been a guard to their tongue. And before they came back with this speech, they would have reviewed it a hundred times in their minds. Maybe it's not correct. Maybe before I speak, I should think again. With that introspection, they would have thought more deeply. They would have realized, of course, that Hashem could save us. Hashem could bring us into Eretz Yisrael, that would have prevented the entire unfolding of the events. Their mistake was in not looking at what happened to Miriam, not understanding the power of speech, not understanding the impacts that our words have.